Hi, my name is Tiffany, and I'd like to welcome you to the Pacific Battleship Center aboard the USS Iowa BB-61, future home of the National Museum of the Surface Navy. Let me introduce you to this beautiful piece of engineering. Construction of this ship started way back in June of 1940 at the New York Navy Yard, and it was launched on its first assignment in August of 1942. BB-61 was active in World War II, the Korean War, and during the Cold War era. As you can see, this is a large ship. She's actually the largest battleship ever built by the US Navy, coming in at about 887 feet long. That's almost as long as 25 school buses lined up in a row. With 19 decks, seven below the main deck we're standing on, she comes in at 216 feet tall from the baseline of the hull. With this ship being mostly made of steel, can you imagine how much she weighs? Wanna take a guess? The Iowa is so heavy that it displaces or moves 45,800 tons of water out of the way when it's lowered into the ocean. That's enough water to fill 18 and a half Olympic sized swimming pools. That's a lot of water. How does a ship this big float? Together, we're going to investigate buoyancy and why it allows certain things to float while other things sink. First, we need to understand all the different forces acting on our ship. Everything on Earth, including you and me, experiences the force of gravity. Gravity is what pulls us down to the Earth instead of letting us float off into space. When placed in the ocean, gravity pulls the ship down into the water. However, the Iowa doesn't completely sink. That means there has to be a force pushing up from the bottom of the ship that is strong enough to keep it afloat. This force is the buoyant force. As the ship sinks into the water, water pressure builds up along the sides of the hull and beneath the hull. Once this upward pressure is equal in magnitude or strength to the force of gravity pulling down on the ship, the ship will stop sinking and float. This concept is known as Archimedes' principle or the law of buoyancy. Archimedes was an ancient Greek mathematician and mechanical engineer that lived over 2,000 years ago, from 287 BC to 212 BC. And he came up with discoveries that engineers are still relying on today. An important characteristic that will help determine if something sinks or floats is that item's density. Everything in the universe is made up of matter, and how tightly that matter is packed into something is how dense it is. If matter is packed into the item more densely than it's packed into the water, it'll sink. If that item is less dense than the water, it'll float. Density is described or defined as mass over volume. So how much matter something contains over how much space it takes up. You can have two different objects with the same amount of mass or matter, but if they take up a different amount of space, they'll have different densities. For example, I have two sheets of tin foil here they each have the same amount of mass. However, I'm going to fold one of them up into a really small little ball, and I'm gonna make the other into a makeshift boat and see which of them sinks and which of them floats. As you can see, one takes up a lot more space than the other. So same mass, but definitely different volumes. Which one do you think will sink and which one do you think will float? Time for our hypotheses. Let's go ahead and drop it in the water and we'll see what happens. So here we go, little packet. Oh, it actually sank right to the bottom. And let's see if our boat floats. It floats. While this little packet has all of its mass concentrated into this small area, it's a lot denser than the water. So it drops straight to the bottom when you drop it in. But since our boat takes up so much more space and has more volume, it makes it less dense than the water and it floats on the surface. Here's our STEM challenge for you for the week. Using only a single piece of tinfoil, design and construct or make a boat that will float when you place it in the water. 
and add weight to it in the form of pennies to see how much weight your boat can hold before it sinks. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding pennies to mine now. I only have 10, I <laughs> hope that's enough to make it sink. Um, we'll see how it goes. Here goes one penny, two pennies, three pennies, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> 10 pennies was not enough to make my boat sink. That's a pretty strong boat. Do you think your boat can float with 10 pennies or more in it? Please share a picture of your boat with us on social media and let us know how many pennies it was able to carry. Until next time, have fun with your boat making.